cage. But the first sentence is, a mixed martial arts fighter from Portugal died Tuesday, three days after being hospitalized with, in cage. Ooh, no. three days after being hospitalized with injuries from a fight. Uh, unbelievably irresponsible reporting really makes you appreciate professionalism here in MMA fighting, but New York Post is doing its job by putting fear into those uneducated in the sport. Well, okay. Um, I guess let's talk about this, shall we? Let's uh, get some of these facts down if we can. Um, here is the truth of the matter as I can determine it at this moment in time. We really don't know uh, what happened. And here's what I mean by that. You might find that a very obvious or in some ways unsatisfying answer, and it probably should be unsatisfying. If you're looking for satisfaction from the story, not that the, not that the fighter in question died, but if you're looking for some kind of satisfaction to say, aha, MMA is, it'll be okay. This was a freak thing. Um, you know, don't get too concerned about it. It's sad for this guy. Let's put some money in his GoFundMe page, but let's not challenge our worldview about this. I would really caution against that, actually. I've seen a lot of reporting from the MMA side of the equation saying that, well, this is probably just a freak accident. Really? How do you know that? It seems to me we have no way to conclude that whatsoever. Now, <clears throat> you, I went back and looked at some of the weigh-in photos. Um, by the way, did you realize his opponent's name, the gentleman who died, his opponent's nickname is The Hospital, which is just sort of an ominous thing. Uh, I know that is coincidence, but nevertheless, it was not great. I think his name is Charlie Ward. Anyway, neither here nor there. Um, the stoppage wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. It, was, it didn't raise any obvious, unusual red flags. I went back and looked at the uh, weigh-in footage. I tweeted it out this morning. From an appearance standpoint, which is highly unscientific, but at least worthy of some level of um, screening, right? Didn't appear to be any obvious red flags. He did not look sucked out. He made weight. His body did not appear to be uh, particularly um, demonstrating any signs of massive dehydration that we're aware of. So it's not entirely clear um, what happened to him. And I think that's sort of my point. I've seen a lot of people say, this is just an accident. I don't know that it is. I don't know that's an accident. This guy didn't just die out of nowhere. A guy died after a mixed martial arts fight. He complained of headaches uh, five minutes after the bout and was rushed to the hospital and was vomiting. So we know for a fact there was probably some head trauma. Okay, so where did that come from? Um, there could have been a pre-existing medical condition exacerbated from an MMA fight that wasn't detected. The question is, why wasn't that detected? Um, would normal screenings in most states have found that? Would a CT scan have found that? Uh, maybe it wasn't a brain issue. Maybe it's some other issue that um, ultimately manifested itself in the brain, but was, who knows, some other kind of issue that uh, uh, could have led to, you know, that the, the brain issue might have been the second or third problem to arise. We don't really know. We also don't really know what kind of quality of care what is, what was the name of this company? I actually reached out to them to get some information from them. Um, it's like a med event or ed, uh, God, I looked them up today. Let me, let me see if I still have the email up here. There are a couple of, here we go. No, that's not it. Well, I forget the name of the uh, event here. It's not regulated by the state in, in, our, in the Republic of Ireland. Um, they have to hire these third-party services to come in there. One of the more famous ones is Safe MMA. Um, another one, God, I can't remember the name of it now. Hold on. I'm going to find it now because it's driving me nuts. Um, Agar. Hold on just a second. I'm going I'm to find this because this is important. It's about taking me a second. Here's a, here's a point being, we don't really understand the level of oversight that's provided by um, these third-party services. From what I can tell online, um, it seems to be a lot of, we have uh, EMTs on staff, um, do some blood work, 
and that's really about it. That is woefully insufficient. That is not proper regulation at all. The idea that a promoter is going to, uh, of their own volition, out of nowhere, match the same kind of regulatory um, veracity that the state is going to require more often than not is never going to happen. It's just not even a well-intentioned promoter. They don't have those skills. A promoter is not in the business of regulating themselves, partly because there's a conflict of interest, partly because they don't know how to do it properly. Now, the state might have its own issues, but they, that is, that is their job. They have no other issue, but that job. And, and the regulation comes down to whether the matches are appropriate. In many states, you know, um, there's a question of, hey, well, someone's who had a pre-fight medical exam. What, is that, what does that even mean? Who administered the exam? How long did they administer it? What did they do? What paperwork was required? Can we see the paperwork? Is there a trail of this? More than that, there are, there are codes about um, where gurneys need to be, how ambulances need to be staged, how many medical personnel need to be there relative to how many competitors are there, um, how quick points of egress need to be, uh, who the local hospital is, there's a, there's a chain of custody where everything is planned out in the event of a scenario where someone has to be transported. We don't really know if any of those things are met. We have some reason to believe some of those things were met. And here's the point. I am not saying that the promoter is we know at fault and that this is, uh, he must have had a pre-existing condition. What I am telling you is we don't have any information to make one conclusion one way or the other. But this, I have seen some premature reporting uh, that, you know, well, everything was done normally. We don't, we don't know that at all. There is a much more thorough investigation that has to happen. So if you want to be mad at the New York Post because they're out there saying MMA fighter beaten to death in cage, which is almost literally true, but okay, I see your point. It's sensational journalism then fine, you have a right to be angry at that. But you should also not run to accept the idea that everything is just hunky-dory here and this guy died via spontaneous combustion. No, no, no. A guy died fighting in a cage in front of other people. We need to figure out what happened. And if someone is, uh, did something wrong, either through malfeasance or negligence, we need to know about that, period. You do not get to run to the comfort of your worldview because you don't want it challenged. If somebody dies while you are staging an event, somebody messed up somewhere. That's just, that's just a basic rule of thumb you can accept. It might be that he had the rarest of medical conditions that was just not detectable even if he had fought in New Jersey under USADA sanctioning. And if that's the case, then we will say so, and we will say, what more could we reasonably have done, right? But we are far from that scenario right now. We know that there, may, there, there appear to have been doctors there. No one has spoken to the doctors that I'm aware of, at least all of them, the ones in attendance. I think one or two have spoken. We haven't talked to any of the EMT officials. We don't have a timeline of how long it took to get them there. We don't know what happened when he got to the hospital. We don't, we, there's so much we don't know. We don't know, I don't know how much medical work he had done ahead of time. Blood test, it appears at a minimum, but what, what is that? Okay, so he didn't have HIV maybe. That doesn't tell us much. You cannot look at a scenario where someone dies in competition and say, don't challenge my love of MMA because something went wrong. If something goes wrong, you need to understand why, right? It's an unbelievable tragedy. And it happened in plain view. So, before we declare it was just a freak accident, before we declare the promoter was wrong, before we declare the promoter wasn't wrong, it's just a function of medical screening that no one would have caught anyway, we wait. And we wait and say, I don't know what happened. The only thing we can say is we cannot conclude that this was just bad luck. I don't see nearly enough evidence to suggest that this was bad luck. It may be that case, but let's let a thorough investigation happen first so that this doesn't happen to anyone else again. And I think we owe Joan that. I think we owe ourselves that. I think we owe the sport that. And I think we owe any future competitor in Ireland or any other place uh, that as well. I'm sure that all the actors here are well-intentioned, but well-intentioned people without core competencies or experience can make bad 
decisions or not even know how to make the right ones. There's a lot of unanswered questions here, a lot. And we don't really have enough of the answers yet. And I also think, and I know someone asked me this earlier, they were like, you know, what, what does this mean for, you know, the UFC? To me, it's not an accident that it hasn't happened with the UFC because they have pretty strict guidelines. And if guys have medical ailments, they usually, and I don't mean the case of, we don't know what happened to Joan, but I mean, you know, if guys don't have particularly sturdy chins, even if they're talented, they usually get weeded out beforehand. Or if they have a medical condition at some point, it's usually discovered before it ever happens in the UFC. Sometimes guys slip through. I forget the guy who was a nurse out in Texas uh, who had a couple of nice wins. One of Seth Kaczynski, he had a heart condition, ultimately had to quit. Um, but it's, it's usually pretty rare. And so you have the highest level referees. You have better medical care. They know, I mean, they know what's required uh, of them to self-police. They've got a guy who used to do it in a uh, official government's position, now helping the UFC with that. And even then they make mistakes, but they haven't made one so tragic as to uh, see that happen yet. But um, I don't know if it's ever going to happen in the UFC. I certainly hope not. But just by the law of averages, you have to wonder if it's just inevitable at some point. At some point, someone's going to mess up or something's going to happen that we can't anticipate or deal with. Uh, and then what? You know, I don't know what the answer to that's going to be. I think Ireland will be fine, but they should let the invest let the investigation play out. That is the ethical thing to do. I know the Minister of Sport has called for that. And look, maybe he'll go on a witch hunt. I don't know. I don't know enough about the dynamics of this guy in particular or the the situation in Ireland or um, politically if he has any pressure to do things in a certain way. And if the investigation turns out to be a sham, well, then we should say that as well. But um, as far as I can see right now, the state investigating this is seems on the surface if you were the minister of sport would you not investigate this would you just say oh okay they had a few doctors there in an ambulance and they seem to care for them that's that's the read i'm getting on this i don't know that we have really enough um information to conclude that to the letter this was done correctly moreover the footage i've seen of this uh the stoppage was um well the stoppage itself wasn't bad well, okay, the stoppage itself wasn't bad, but the fight itself, I'm told, went on too long. That they could have stopped this a lot earlier. So you can get scenarios where, now, in the end, Chris Weidman ended up being okay and Luke Rockhold ended up being okay. If you just saw the stoppage, forget all the other, all, all the other rounds, what would you say about it? You'd say, oh, the stoppage seemed fine, but you're missing all the context. We need to see the entire fight. The entire fight. That's what we need to see. We need to see the body language of this kid well before the stoppage ever happened. And we need to talk to his corner and ask him what they heard. Was he slurring his speech between rounds? Was he responsive to your commands? What, did a doctor evaluate them between rounds? Did that happen? There's a lot of missing pieces here. And maybe all those things happened and maybe there were no red flags and maybe it was just some kind of medical condition that I mentioned before that we just had no way of knowing. I personally, and we don't know, my, my hunch is I don't buy that. I don't buy that this kid just died. That doesn't sound very right to me. It sounds to me because in every other case where someone has died virtually, there has been a moment in time you can point to, or several moments in time, where you could say something went wrong here. In the case of Sammy Vasquez, the first guy to die in Texas, you know, uh, it wasn't clear that he was... Um, he got the proper screening ahead of time. He was older than 35. He should have had additional medical screenings and he didn't get them. Boom, state failure. It, it, none, I, I, I don't believe in magic. I don't believe in divine intervention. I don't believe in any of that stuff. I think we believe, I, I believe we live in a world of, 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 for the most part, at least enough to make some determinations here, a law of, or a universe of, of, of uh, laws, uh, a universe of consequence. Um, universe of, of known quantities, enough that we can measure and, and inform ourselves about what happened here. I don't just believe that, well, you know, he just died. By the way, here is someone saying, uh, MMA fight could have been stopped earlier, says Connor. Speaking after the bout, which cost the Portuguese fighter his life on Monday, McGregor said he felt the fight had gone too far. Just uh, said just before the fighter's death from the Daily Mirror UK. He did end up praising the medical teams there, though. Medical teams intervening too late it's science. It's not magic. They can't do things once things have become undone so much. So maybe the medical staff was great. Maybe it's an officiating issue. Again, 
I'm just not really willing to believe. And what was happening with this kid in training in the weeks and days before? We should talk to his camp. Where were they in this whole issue? Why haven't we heard from them? More than what we've heard from statements that have been made publicly that are, you know, that express sorrow and regret. So everyone here needs to be talked to. Every single, from the medical staff to the EMT to the security at the venue to the promoter to the corner, everything. Everyone needs to explain this here because this kid just didn't up and die.